Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Today, we will be going over the role of the partner administrator here within the Azure Enterprise Portal. Now, to access the Enterprise Portal, a partner simply needs to visit ea.azure.com and log in with their partner administrator credentials. When they do so, they'll get brought to this page, the Partner tab of the Azure Enterprise Portal. And customers do not have access to this Partner tab. You'll notice when you, the partner, logs in, at first you do not have access to all of the menu items at the top of the page or here on the left side. In order to actually have access there, first we need to click into an enrollment. For now, though, I'd like to provide a quick overview of what we're seeing on this page. On the left side of the screen here, we see some information on the partner company. I would like to highlight the authentication level here and the blue pen. The blue pen indicates this is an editable field. Now, when we give that a click, you'll notice you have a few options here for the authentication level, essentially how you, the partner administrators, are logging in and out of the Azure Enterprise Portal. You'll notice you have a few different options starting with Microsoft account only. That indicates you have to have a Microsoft account to access the Azure Enterprise Portal. Anyone can create a Microsoft account. You simply go to signup.live.com and you create your username and password there. Then once added here, you would use the same credentials to log into the Enterprise Portal. The alternative would be work or school account only. Work or school accounts are actually set up through the Active Directory. So if you have a federated or cloud-based Active Directory, you can use those accounts to log in and out of the Enterprise Portal. Next, you'll notice Mixed Account, which simply gives you the option of both a Microsoft account or a work account. And then finally, Work or School Account Cross-Tenant. With Cross-Tenant, you'll be able to pull from multiple domains or multiple AD tenants. So if there are multiple companies working and you prefer to use your individual work accounts, you can do so by flipping to Cross-Tenant here at the authentication level. Now on the right side of the screen, this is where you're seeing the existing partner administrators. You'll notice when you hover over a partner administrator, you have the ability to edit the information on that admin or delete them entirely. To add a new partner administrator, you simply hit plus add administrator here, and you will fill in the information that pops out in the box on the right side of the screen. That's pretty much it for the page here. I think we're ready to click into the enrollment tab and actually access and edit some of our end customer enrollments. When you click enrollment here, you're going to get a box view of your end customer enrollments. When you can click on any one of the enrollments, it gets brought here to the left side and you have some information on the end customer at the bottom of the page. You'll notice up at the top right, you can also switch to a list view, which opens up additional information on the end user, such as their support level, the start and end date, the status of their enrollment, the markup status, essentially whether you have published their pricing or not, their enrollment balance, and then, of course, if they are in any overage. We'll see that listed here as well. You can also check the box here to see active and your inactive enrollments. Once you do have an enrollment selected, the main thing we want to highlight is how to actually publish the end customer's pricing or establish the markup. To do so, we'll click on the Reports tab here on the left side of the screen. End customers do not have a view of their pricing or their cost information until you publish the prices here within the Azure Enterprise Portal. Here's a quick overview of what we're seeing on this page before we publish prices. The graph across the top of the page represents the end customer's usage, and this company, for instance, started with a balance of $5,000. They haven't used any of that commitment balance yet. If they had, we would see a green bar here, month over month, indicating the total amount of the Azure services that they're utilizing. If they were to surpass this $5,000 threshold in any given month, they move into what we call service overage, and that is shown as a red bar here. When you scroll down on the page for any particular month, you'll actually get a breakdown of each individual service that made up the total usage within that month. The customer does not have access to any of this information in their enterprise portal until you, the partner, actually come and publish their pricing.
Now to publish the pricing, very simply, you select the markup icon here. You'll notice for this particular enrollment, it says no markup set. I give that a click, and I enter the amount of the markup that I'd like to establish here. I can choose to enter 0% here if I wanted to pass through the costs that I'm incurring onto the end customer, or I can discount those prices or mark them up by any amount. I simply enter that amount here. Now for this particular customer, I'm going to pass through my pricing onto the end customer, so I'm going to apply a markup of 0%. Now I select Preview. The page here will update to show me what the end customer is going to see. I have applied a markup of 0%. So there's actually no change in what I am seeing versus the end customer in terms of their balance and their usage charges. Once I confirm everything on this page is correct, I simply hit publish here to actually publish the markup and mark this data available to my end customer. One important thing to note, if you publish the prices in the middle of the term, they'll actually apply and take effect from the start of that term. Another important note, service overages will be charged at the same prices as the published rate, but they are charged after the fact and they're paid in arrears. A couple of other things to point out on this page. You'll notice an icon here at the top right where I'm able to switch between the partner's view as well as the end customer's view. It was currently set at the end customer view. I gave it a click now and I'm seeing this as the partner's view, my view as the partner. I applied a markup of zero, so there isn't much of a change here. To see how the published rate affects the customer's view, I simply select the icon again to switch back to what the end customer has seen on their reports tab. Now the data here is displayed by default in a monthly format. You'll notice you also have M and C here. C indicating a custom view where you're able to establish your own date range using the drop downs here at the top of the page. The partner can also download usage and cost information into Excel if needed. I wanted to quickly highlight that. You can also download the price sheet. Again, you have the option to switch between the partner and the customer view here to download either the partner or customer pricing into an Excel format. Another important note here on this page, you'll notice you have access to the Azure Marketplace price sheet in Excel as well. Now that is available for download because the partner is charged for an end customer's marketplace usage. The partner is supposed to take on those costs and then invoice the end customer. There is no markup or discount applied to these prices. They are third-party prices. The partner can view and download the complete price list here and then invoice their customers if needed based on their marketplace usage. Their marketplace usage is also displayed within the usage summary. It is indicated by a purple bar in the graph at the top of the page. You, the partner, have access to the customer's cost and usage information. If you'd like a deep dive into the reporting page, we do also have a video available from the end customer's perspective on the usage summary and the download usage sections. For now, that covers our overview of the role of the partner administrator. Thanks for tuning in.